I really appreciate it. Um, let's see if I'm live yet. Yep. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I want to entitle this sermon, uh, Back to Basics, uh, which basically means back to the beginning, back to where we first started. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're about to do. And I pray that you will, will speak to me and speak through me and speak powerfully today, Lord God, as you, as you teach us to go back to basics. Um, I thank you for what you're about to do and what you have already done and what we couldn't even think of doing, but will do through you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys. Um, well, today's sermon is titled Back to Basics. And I first... Um, I was watching um, someone last night and they were talking about the story of the prodigal son in Luke 15. And we've all read that story um, that Jesus was telling about the son who wanted his inheritance. Um, he got his inheritance and spent it all and enjoyed himself and then when the inheritance was gone and he was sleeping with the pigs he went back home and his father was waiting to welcome him with a ring and robes and a feast and all of that and I was listening to this and what what the Lord brought to me was um, about the other brother who stayed who stayed home who did what he was supposed to do and at the end of the, that story um, uh, the other brother asked his father what's up what about me and he said your brother's home and, uh, but there's room for you too. And um, the Lord wants me to say, um, if you are um, jealous or if you are uh, envious of somebody's what somebody has um, because you feel that they don't deserve it. Here you are uh, working in the church, whatever church forever, and you're, you volunteer for every ministry team. You do everything you possibly can, and yet still you get nowhere, and the person who um, who's lived um, to your mind, a riotous life and just did everything uh, slapdash and haphazard, haphazardly and really didn't commit themselves, they're getting a party. Sometimes it seems like that, but the Lord said, if you would stop being jealous and envious and go back to your love, his love, and go back to showing care and understanding, things might open up for you. Maybe, maybe it's not because that person, uh, lived such a riotous life or whatever, but maybe it's God favored them because of their attitude. 
we sometimes like the very dramatic uh, testimonies, like I was on drugs and the Lord, I was a, a, I was on drugs about to kill myself, my life was going nowhere, and then God found me, I was watching a TV program or something, and then, um, but we often forget about the people who grew up in church who never, who had their problems with sin, yes, but who never strayed and was always faithful to the Lord. And sometimes those people can be, um, can get very, very resentful. And the Lord is saying, repent for your resentment, for your secret resentment. Sometimes resentment is not outward. Sometimes it's inward sometimes you might you might not not you might not know that you're resentful but you are and some and when resentment is not when anger is not dealt dealt with it becomes resentment when resentment is not dealt with it explodes in different ways and it can the dangerous thing about resentment is it can become passive aggressive like you cannot sometimes you don't flare up in anger but sometimes it's passive uh, it's passive but it's aggressive and you you, do, you don't flare up but you still want that person internally to fail because you don't feel they deserve what they have. And the Lord said, go back to basics. Go back to when you first couldn't stop reading your Bible. Go back to your relationship with me. Go back to that because in that place, I will deal with your pain. I will deal with your suffering. I will deal with what you're going through. If you would just go back to that place and stop, stop focusing on what other people have and what other people are doing and who is getting blessed. Um, frankly, I'm going to say something rude here. Frankly, sir or sir or ma'am, sister or brother. Beloved, it's none of your business why they're getting blessed or why they're doing this. Focus on your own life. And I know it's hard because sometimes you don't mean to be resentful, but you see all these other people who supposedly overnight just got blessed, but you don't see what they had to go through. And then, if you would submit yourself and become available and really go back to the basics of reading your word, of worship, of just talking to the Lord. Some people, some people work for the Lord, but they don't, they work for the Lord, but they have no relationship with the Lord. And he's calling for for you judgmental, resentful, angry people to get in relationship with him so that he can deal with what's going on in there. And he wants me to tell you that he loves you. And he wants me to tell you that he doesn't want you to live like that anymore. He wants you to have real joy he wants you to really be like what you act like. So really be like what you act like. And he doesn't want it to be a game. He wants it to be real. He wants it to be authentic. And it can be authentic. He just wants a real relationship with you. 
And that's what he wants me to say to you. He wants, God wants a real relationship with you today. Um, and you don't have to be afraid that you're not good enough. Sometimes uh, a Pharisee behavior like or self-righteous behavior is to cover up a person's inadequacies. And he wants me to tell you, you don't have to play like a haughty Pharisee uh, to prove that you're more adequate than others because he made you. Of course, you're not only adequate, but you are beyond adequate. But your attitude, beloved, is killing you. Your attitude, you think, you think that God doesn't see who you really are? You think that God doesn't see uh, the times you've cried and thought that you're such a no good person, nobody wants to be with you. But if you would just open up and go back to the basics of his word, go back to the basics of worship, go back to the basics of prayer, he'll deal with all that stuff and you'll have joy unspeakable and full of glory and you won't even recognize yourself and that joy will flow and the people who didn't want, want to be around you before it will be a magnet joy and love love are magnets people are drawn to positive people people are drawn to people that have joy people are drawn to people that have love and sometimes self-righteousness comes from pain, comes from issues that not dealt with. Your husband left you 30 years ago and you still haven't forgiven him. Your daughter is not speaking to you because of some, um, because of some abuse that happened when she was a child and you're still harboring that and she's angry and you're angry and sometimes even at Christmas when you guys get together you guys are barely civil to one another and you guys don't speak to each other but your mother and daughter your father and daughter he's saying to stop that get go back to the basics of loving me of loving your children unconditionally. Find out the details of what happened with that abuse. And, and, and stop thinking that you know the person that was accused. And really listen with an open heart. Really listen with understanding. Really listen without judgment. Sometimes we judge a person um, because of what we see in ourselves. We judge them to, ha to have what we see in ourselves. Like I said yesterday, um, that shook me to the core. He said, you don't preach for other people. He said, you preach for yourself. Other people just happen to be the beneficiaries of what you're preaching. And he said, um, it'll say the same thing to you. Sometimes you don't, uh, what, what you see wrong in somebody else is something deeply that you know is wrong with yourself. But it's easier to point the f one finger at somebody else than point three fingers at yourself. Because we don't like to deal with ourselves. We don't like to be alone with ourselves. So the Lord is saying, get back to basics. Get, that, get back to basics of prayer. Get back to basics of worship. Get back to basics of the word. Get back to basics of fasting. And he's saying, when you get back to basics, that's when my love will cover you. 
That's when my joy will sustain you. That's when my peace will overcome you. And he's saying, uh, to get back to basics in that way. And on a completely different but related topic, is there anything else, Lord, you want to say on that one before I move on? Okay. Um, I was thinking of uh, people that are in high school and people that are in university and um, people that are just starting out in life and trying to think of their careers and whatever. Um, and the Lord is saying, I want you to speak to the young people and tell them to go back to basics. Uh, and I said, what do you mean, Lord? And he said, um, tell them to, to go back to, to um, go back in the history of what um, people used to do that they now want to do and study what those people do. Uh, let me explain, let me explain that. Um, okay, L let's say if you're, if you're good at music, if you're a musician and want to sing or be a musician, instead of uh, laughing or thinking that you can do it better because you're younger, learn from those people who have done it before you. Immerse yourself in different kinds of music or different kinds of styles. I was thinking of a person that I, I've never met but I've heard of, and I said, if I were to ever meet this person, I would tell them, uh, instead of just focusing on the style of music you like or the style of music now, why not go back to to styles of music uh, that you have no idea about? And, and when you do that, um, study, study what the greats before have done. Not so that you could copy but so you can gain knowledge. History is sometimes not for us to repeat. History is for us to gain knowledge. And when we gain knowledge, good or bad, we take that and we build upon it. History is just a building block. So your experience builds on my experience, builds on my experience. So we have a whole beautiful tapestry of life that we can all learn from and work from. Um, so instead of just la uh, laughing or saying that was for that generation, take, um, in, my, in my example, take the styles of music from other generations and see how they did it, see how they operated, see how they um, mixed and, you know, see see what the grades did and add that to what you do and create something totally new and different. And even in sports, um, see what the greats in, you, in your sport did. Uh, not so you could copy it, but so you can build on it and mix your mix your technique with their technique, so we can come up with something greater. Um, you know, what if you're thinking of, of law? Look at some of the great lawyers of the past, and look how they studied with uh, their defense or whatever law you 
you want to practice, look how how they did it and add it to to what you do and create something new. There are so many people wanting to copy other people. Our job is not to co- copy other people. Our job is to um, uh, make ourselves great by trying to beat ourselves. Um, tr- trying to, to beat ourselves to become better. We don't we don't fight against ourselves. We don't com- we don't compete against other people or fight against other people. We compete and fight against ourselves um, to become greater. But that's not to say that we can't take something from the generations before and build on it and become and and make something totally new out of the out of the new that we know and the old that we don't it's phenomenal i was thinking of uh worship music i i was thinking of just um just going back to different styles of music and seeing how uh, people did it and just building and creating something new from what they did to what I do and just creating some whole new style out of the old and the new. Not forgetting either or, but just building on it and adding to it and creating new genres of music and stuff like that. And as um, that as well is going back to basics. I um, I was thinking of uh, the album that Christina Aguilera had a few a few years ago. Uh, called Back to Basics, um, where it sounded like um, it was her voice, but the music called to a different time. Um, She she, um, mixed what she did with what people in previous generations the 40s and the 50s did I'm, and built on that to create a great sound. So that's what I think this generation needs to do. We don't need to cast off what the older generation did. We need, or we, we don't need to cast it off or we don't need to copy it. What we need to do is is listen to it, absorb it, learn from it, study it, and and build on it, and add to it to create something new. That's how we'll get new styles of music. That's how we'll get new ways of doing technology. That's how we'll get new ways of building legal defenses or you know, in any industry, by building and adding and going back to neither casting off or copying, but going back to basics to build and to learn. And that's how how we will create a, a better society if we if we learn from each other. Um, if the if the seasoned people learn from the younger people, and the younger people learn from the seasoned people, we can create something really wonderful. Instead of fighting to, with each other, working together to create something new. Because there are things we can learn from previous generations. There are things we don't have to experience again 
but there are also things that they can learn from us too and together we'll create something new and something wonderful in every industry whether it be law whether it be music whether it be sports whether it be architecture whether it be business whether it be real estate or whatever so i would say to any young person out there looking for a career or whatever someone in their 20s study what the older not older more seasoned generation did ask questions or if you if you are interested in the industry learn as much as you can not only about that industry now but learn as much as you can about the history of that industry um because i'm interested in film i learned a lot about the early film i i learned about the jazz singer which is the first um talking picture i learned a lot about the lumiere brothers and their first films which, which are um um the lumiere brothers were a set of brothers who um i think in about 19 i think it's 1910 or 1915 or something like that uh would would make these sign would make these like 2 minute silent movies and this was this was so new for the time legendary and it moved and it moved from there to to the to the point where it is now so i studied um the history of film and and yeah i immersed myself in the history of film and in my industry not only the actors now but the 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 great directors who came before me like um Frank Capra is my favorite director the director of It's a Wonderful Life to to Tyler Perry who is one of the greatest director filmmakers ever um uh, to Spike Lee and all of those as uh, all of those great directors and um uh to the director of happy days i forget his name now um gary something or other uh he also directed uh pretty woman uh he died now sadly but because i like romance movies i studied him because he did a lot of family entertainment and romance movies and i also because i'm also a preacher i studied the great like um even the great who came came before me like oral roberts and uh shambach and uh dwight thompson and john hagee and td jakes of course who who would want to study the bishop i i did not just study their word of god but i also studied their way of preaching their way of or their way of orating their way of communicating the gospel like what made this person such a great communicator and and it comes to, Oh, I forgot Catherine Coleman as well. She's awesome. Uh Catherine Coleman, Cheryl Brady, uh we need to buy them Cindy Trim and all all of those preachers up to the preachers like today. Up to day like Stephen Furtick and Rich Wilkerson and all of those uh 
amazing men of God, all those amazing preachers and teachers. And I studied how they, how they, uh, how they put put together a sermon, how they like uh, speak in front of people, and what tools they use to to communicate the word of God and it's been really helpful just studying the in both my fields studying what people have done before not to copy what people have done but to build on what they have done and add to it so that's what what I've done to make myself the, the person I am and I found it really helpful so thank you guys for sticking with me and being with me today I really appreciate it
Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't preach you enough. I owe you my life. Can't preach you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good to me. Bye, guys. Have a great day. Gary Marshall. That's his name. That's the gentleman who did Pretty Woman, Happy Days, and uh, his last film, Mother's Day. He died a few years ago at 81. So that's his name, Gary Marshall, one of my favorite directors. I can't believe I forgot his name for a second there, but it's Gary Marshall. He's an awesome director, one of my favorites. So many doors you've opened, so many ways you made, so many times you heal me, better than good to me, better than good to me. So many doors you've opened, so many ways you made, so many times you heal me, better than good to me, better than good to me. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good to me. Back to my first uh, little bit of this sermon. Um, the Lord wants me to tell you for all those righteous people, self-righteous people, um, love is calling you home. Love is calling you home. The reason I was kind of harsh with you is because the Lord loves you so much and he doesn't want you to live in anger and self-righteousness and bitterness and jealousy and resentment. He wants me to tell you that love is calling you home. Just like the prodigal son, the sons who have stayed but are emotionally oh, away because it's possible for you to stay going to church but be emotionally away or emotionally unavailable or so clogged up with stuff that you just are there but you're not there you're serving but you don't have a heart of service and he's saying love is call calling you home today so he would say this when love calls you home, forgiveness embraces the past you must own, and all the mistakes that can read your name are gone.
wrong. That's what happens when love calls you home. Love calls you home. Forgiveness embraces the past you was owned. And all the mistakes that can't read your name are gone. That's what happens when love calls you home. Bye. Take care. When love calls you home, forgiveness embraces the past. He was old, and all the mistakes that carry your name are gone. That's what happens when love calls you home. Love is calling you home today. Actually, love is drawing you home today. Let, let love draw you home. Don't fight it with self-righteousness. Self-righteousness has been your enemy all your life. Let love draw you. Let his peace draw you. Let his kindness draw you. Let his forgiveness draw you today. I don't know. Healing is calm down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Your healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. You're healed today. You're free today. You're restored today. Right now. You're healed today. You're free today. You're restored today. Right now. Receive it. Just receive it. Receive it. Right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it right now. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is.
is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Healing rain is falling down. Yes, healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. The presence of the Lord is just so powerful here right now. I'm just trying to close, but he won't let me. He's just still speaking by his spirit. He's saying, your healing is there right now. Your financial healing, your emotional healing, your healing from self-righteousness, your healing from pain, your healing from suffering. Just grab it. It's there right now in your living room, watching on your iPad, watching on your computer. Whatever you need, it's here right now. It's here right now. He's ready to restore, heal, and deliver right now. He won't... He won't let me go off because he knows that there is a healing rain happening right now. And I'm just going to soak up in his presence. <laughs>